Hello, and welcome to the Z-Access YouTube channel, where we talk about fringe accessibility topics. This is the second video in a series on Ubuntu accessibility in GNOME, uh, using the Orca screen reader in Ubuntu version 18.04. In a previous video, we talked about Orca basics, including how to start and stop Orca, and an overview of the Orca configuration dialog box. If that interests you, go check it out. Today, we are going to talk about Orca's screen review commands, and I can't think of a better way to do that than through opening the terminal and testing out the screen review commands on Linux terminal output. There are a couple different terminal options that Linux users have at their disposal. I can tell you right now that Xterm, unfortunately, is not accessible with the Orca screen reader. Uh, the one that I know and love that is accessible is the GNOME terminal. You can access that in several ways. You can find it in the applications list and arrow to it. You can type terminal into the search and press enter. Or my favorite way of all, from anywhere in GNOME, you can press Control alt t Desktop frame, content view panel, icon view layer pane, trash nautilus link canvas, Z-A-C-H and Noli. Tilde frame, Z-A-C-H and Noli colon tilde dollar. And be presented with a friendly bash prompt with a dollar sign at the end. Um, I should stop and say again, I'm sorry about the levels in this video. The screen reader seems to be much louder than my speech. That is a result of the screencasting software that I'm using not giving me very good control over my different levels. I'm sorry about that. I hope to address it in future videos. There may also be a loud terminal beep in this video. Um, Ubuntu 18.04's terminal beep in particular is a little bit abrasive, so hopefully we can... I will try to not let that happen, but if we do, it, it will be loud. Okay, uh, also I will maximize this terminal window with super down arrow. I'm sorry, super up arrow. <laughs> okay, so how does a terminal work when you're using a screen reader? Well, in general, Orca screen reader reads the output of the command that you type, and then it reads the bash prompt again. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with the syntax of a bash prompt, it goes username, at hostname, colon, a directory, and either a dollar sign or a number sign, depending on your... So So my username is Zach. My host name is Nolai, named after the brewery in Spokane, Washington. Um, and my directory right now is the my home directory, and I have a dollar sign at the end of the prompt to indicate that I'm not the root user. So just to give you an example of what I was talking about earlier, if I change to the top level directory with cd space slash, um, and press enter. Z -A -C -H -O -E, slash dollar. Z -A -C -H -O -E, slash frame. It said two things. Um, it said Zach at Nolai. I'm not sure why it's spelling my name, uh, but it it's, means to say Zach at Nolai. Slash dollar. And then it actually read it again because when you change directories in the GNOME terminal, the window title updates to reflect what directory you're in. So that is why it read it twice. It doesn't usually do that. To illustrate that, I will type another command, and this command is going to spit out a lot of output, and I'm doing it on purpose because I want to demonstrate how the um, screen review commands in Orca work. So if I type ls to list all of the directories and press enter, it reads a lot of information, and if you're like me, uh, you can't process all of that information just by hearing it. So it would be nice to review it a little chunk at a time. You may recognize that this is kind of this top-level um, Linux file structure with some <laughs> embarrassing things there that I it looks like some kernel compilations went wrong or something or some updates went wrong because I have some old kernels here. I don't know what that's about. But anyway, uh, to get to the meat of this video, which is how does Orca screen reader screen review work, um, it works in the following way. Just as a reminder, there is a laptop layout and a desktop layout for the Orca keyboard. In this video, I am focusing on the desktop layout. 
So the laptop keystrokes are going to be different, much like with JAWS and NVDA. There are different ways of using the screen reader if you don't have an extended keypad on the side of your computer, uh, on, the, on the right side of your keyboard. So in general, the way screen review works in ORCA is that the seven and nine keys read previous and next line, respectively. The four and six keys read previous and next word, respectively. And the one and three keys read previous and next character, respectively. So it sounds a little weird to say in a narrative, but if you position your fingers on the numeric keypad, and I start by positioning my pointer finger on the nine and my ring finger on the, I'm sorry, my pointer finger on the seven and my ring finger on the nine, it's pretty intuitive to navigate. So for example, if I want to hear that directory listing in a little bit more detail with the previous line, I can press the seven key. And we still got a lot of information, but that read one line. Um, and by the way, there's a difference. That moved the review cursor up a line. It didn't move our keyboard focus anywhere. So if we typed, we would still enter text into the bash prompt, even though the review cursor is now on the previous line. If I press the 9 key, it reads the bash prompt again because that's the line that's right below this. Um, if I press 7 twice, it reads the line of text that I entered in order to get this directory listing. So it's, a it's pretty powerful to be able to review the screen while you're entering text into the bash prompt. So for example, Let's just suppose that I wanted to change into the etc. directory, but I didn't know how etc. was spelled. I could navigate to the line of directories with my nine key from here. And then I could use the four and the six key to navigate by word or chunk of text separated by spaces or tabs, because they're not always necessarily words. And I can do that if I press the six key, for example, Booth. CD -ROM. I get a much better way of navigating this list of directories. So I pressed the six key twice. If I press the four key, Booth. I go the other way. And that's because I'm navigating by word. So let's keep a focus on what we want to do. We want to navigate into the etc. directory. Booth. CD -ROM. Dev. Et cetera. There's etc. And I picked this one on purpose because everybody talks about the etc. directory, but is it really etc.? I don't know. Let's check the spelling. Again, to review spelling by word, by letter, um, you use the one and the three key on the numeric keypad. So if we press the three key, T C space. we're going to get TC. And we missed the E because um, that's where the, the review cursor was. But if we go backwards, C -T -E space. we can notice that it's spelled E -T -C. E -T -C. And so if I wanted to change into the etc. directory, regardless of where my review cursor is, I can type cd slash etc. or cd slash etc. And we get that little double announcement again because the window title changed because we were, named, we were switching directories. That really only happens when you switch directories. Um, so... That's kind of an overview of how the screen review works. Um, there is one other time when screen review is really useful, and this is sort of the second part of this video. Um, I will say that Orca Screen Reader does pretty well with some terminal applications that are not just typing commands. So if something uses end curses, for example, it will do fine. Uh, if you open a basic text editor like Nano, it will do fine. It doesn't do so great with Emacs for some reason. <laughs> so there are some terminal applications where Orca doesn't work, but that's okay. In those cases, you could use a dedicated command line Linux screen reader such as Fenrir or Emacs Speak or Yasser, which maybe we will talk about in future videos. But for now, I just want to show a basic task of editing um, so what we could do, for example, is we could open 
f-stab, and I'm actually not going to edit it, so I'm going to open it. It will open in read-only mode. Hopefully it doesn't make the loud terminal beep. But if I type nano hey. f-stab, which is a uh, file that you may or may not have to edit in Linux, it's the file system table. Uh, and then if we press enter, Okay, so a couple things happened. That bang was Ubuntu 18.04's terminal beep. It was letting us know that this is opened in read-only because I didn't proceed it with sudo. And it read the first line of the file out to us. This is kind of like any other file. If you were to open Notepad in Windows and navigate a file with your arrow keys, um, that is what we're sort of dealing with here. So if I press down arrow, Number. it's going to read the lines of the file to me. Number useful get to print the universally unique identifier for A. Number device. This may be used with that equals as a more robust way to name devices. Uh, and again, we have two screen we have two ways of navigating this now because we're no we're no longer in a terminal prompt setting. This is a, a setting where even a sighted user would be navigating with their arrow keys. So we have the screen review functionality, which is over here on the 10 keypad, so I can navigate by line using the 7 and 9 keys. Number use to print the universally unique identifier for A. Number. And I can be up here on the first line with my screen review, and I can uh, go all the way down here to my file system table and be checking out my, what, I've, what I have mounted at system startup. And then I can be using my review screen review options to be reading the comments at the top of the file. Ooh, so if I, I'm pressing 7 right now, num, num, number that works, even if are added and, and I'm See tab left parenthesis five right parenthesis dot. up here in the comments with my, with my review cursor, but with my arrow keys, if I press down arrow, Ooh, equals 26 c 26938 40 21 4 e 7 fe 9 a 43 c 5 I'm down here with one of my uh, lovely unique user IDs, which is the way that we um, mount devices in Linux now. Um, and so, anyway, that is that is very powerful because you can be reading two things at once with screen review. And I also hope that you've come to understand that with Orca Screen Reader you can do basic terminal tasks like edit configuration files. That is very crucial. If you're working primarily in a graphical user environment and you need to edit something or you need to drop into the terminal and change a basic system file, I find that this is a very efficient and easy way to do it. It's easier than um, using gedit, for example, or using a graphical editor and everything that comes with that, all of those problems. So that is what I wanted to show. Thank you for staring at my F's tab for a while. I will see you next time.